Dear dear students, welcome to the class. So we were discussing about the oscillators, wherein we have discussed up to all the sinusoidal oscillators, that is starting from the tuned oscillators and the RC oscillators, where we have studied uh, Hartley Colbert's oscillator, Weinreich uh, and phase shift oscillator, and also crystal oscillator in the previous class. Now we will be moving with the non-sinusoidal oscillators. That are going to generate the um, waveforms that are not sinusoidal waves. Okay. Here we take an example of square wave generator, and for that we study triple pi diagram. Okay. We study triple pi diagram. Okay. So by signaling corporation, signaling corporation is a company in 1970, they invented this timer. In 1970, invented timer and named it as and name it as S P N E triple five. Okay. S E N E triple five. This N S E N E triple five timer. Triple five timer. Is available at that time. It was available. Now it is available in big package and also it is available in multiple IC forms. It was available at that time as five pin, sorry, eight pin can in the form of eight pin, eight pin can available in the form of eight pin. Dip that means dual inline package. We have studied already about the dual inline package. While studying about the IC 741, we know what is dual inline package. It is also available as a 14 pin dip, also. Also available in 14 pin dip package. Right? This is having one set of triple five, this is also having one set of triple five, whereas this will be having two set of triple fives available in the IC form. Okay. And why this triple five became popular is accurate. It's accurate, it's less in cost because it is accurate. Less in cost having high precision falls. Right? So, because of these reasons, the triple five became very popular and it was very uh, readily used in all the applications of uh, wherever the timing circuits were required and wherever a square wave was required. So, in many multi stable and bi stable vibrators, the triple five diagram is used. So this is about the introduction of triple five. Now moving to the pin diagram. Eight pin big package will be studying here. We'll be studying the eight pin big package of the triple five IC. IC triple five dip package. Okay, that is dual in line package. This is how it is. This is how it appears. Having various pin numbers. For this side and another for this side. Take pin number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
Eight pin dual inline package means on the both sides of the IC equally distributed four plus four total eight pins are available. Right? This pin is ground. Ground or GAD. Right? Ground. This pin is trigger pin. Pin number two is trigger. Pin number three is output. Pin number four is reset. Okay. Here we have control voltage. We apply control voltage to pin number five. Pin number six is threshold voltage. Otherwise, just threshold. Right. Pin number seven is discharge. So that is discharge, and finally, this is VCC. Pin number eight is VCC, and this is the pin diagram of triple five, which is commonly asked in three months. Draw the pin diagram of triple five diagram. So this pin diagram you have to draw. Okay. Each pin is having its own significance and its own operation here. Each pin will be having its own operation. What we have studied about the triple pi till now, that it is used to generate the non-sinusoidal waveforms. Triple pi is used to generate non-sinusoidal waveforms. Right? The triple pi is a reliable, less in cost uh, type of uh, IC. That's why it is mostly used. It was invented by Signetic Corporation in 1970. This is the pin diagram having eight pins. We are we have seen that the triple five is available in three forms. That is, can package and dip package. In dip package also two variants are available: eight pin and sixteen pin. Right? Here we are taking an example of an eight pin dip package. Where the uh, eight pins are having their uh, own functional functionalities. Okay, so the first pin number is ground. Okay, all the measures or all the uh, voltage measurement measurement will be done with this with reference to this pin number. That is the ground. Ground is always the reference, right? And always maintained at zero volts, so that with respect to this, all other voltages can be measured. Trigger, trigger is the input where the trigger signal can be applied. Right? Operation of all these we can understand in a better way with the internal circuit. Okay? The internal circuit is basically comprising of op amps, two op amps connected here, and its output is connected to the flip flop. Internally, there is SR flip flop. The output of low amp is connected to R and the output of upper amp is connected to S. It produces an output Q and Q bar. This Q bar is taken as output. Okay? And this output here is pin number 3. Right? Pin number 3. Here we can carry the reset. And reset is pin number here and the output of the Q is applied to the base of a transistor. This transistor is termed as this charge transistor. This is the internal connection of the triple current drawing here. This charge transistor. This charge transistor and the collector of this transistor is connected to the Taken as discharge here. It is discharge. <clears throat> here, this is discharge, the output is discharge. Okay. And here it is output. That is pin number 3. Okay. 
and this is pin number seven discharge. Okay. Apart from this, this is plus VCC that is pin number eight applied here. This pin will be threshold. This will be threshold and threshold is having pin number six. So VCC is applied here like this. Taking various resistors, this is 5k, this is also 5k. Here the total voltage will be two third of the VCC. Okay, two by three of the VCC. And at this point, the voltage will be one third of the VCC. This is given to minus 30. And here it is trigger. And what is the pin number of trigger? Trigger is pin number 2. Then right? this is connected to ground. And ground is pin number 1. This is control voltage. This is control voltage pin number 5. Okay. Here, this is called as upper comparator. These two are comparators, okay? Upper comparator and lower comparator. The two comparator outputs are given to the S and R respectively, okay? Trigger is applied to. We are also going to resistance connected. 5 kilo, ohm, 5 kilo, and 5 kilo. Here, so this is pin number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, 8. So this is the internal connection of the triple five. How this triple five internally appears like? Here, so this can be taken as a unit type. So now, with reference to this, we can see what each pin is going to work like. Here, ground, I have told you all the in this pin number one has to be connected to zero volts. That is ground. Okay, I will uh, come to the VCC. VCC is the required voltage that may be the uh, 5 plus to 18 volts. Okay, VCC is 5 to plus 5 to 18 volts. Okay, plus 5 to 18 volts for the operation of the timer. The minimum applied voltage is the required voltage for the uh, triple five timer to work. Here. Now, looking at the uh, trigger, trigger input is applied to the lower comparator and lower comparator also is applied to the reset. Okay? So the trigger signal and for the trigger signal to make the output of the comparator effective, okay? To apply the signal, it has to be applied with the negative pulse, okay, because it is already being applied to the minus terminal of the arm. Okay, a negative pulse has to be applied. A negative pulse applied greater than one third of the comparator, the output of the comparator becomes one. And when the, when the output of the comparator becomes one, the output is going to become what? Five. Okay, reset. It is going to trigger the reset of the uh, uh, SR flip flop, and uh, when reset is triggered, the output is going to be zero, and its component Q1 is going to be one. Okay. Here, so the output. Uh, it has to be applied with the negative pulse of greater than minus VCC to make the output of the comparator high, lower comparator. Okay. So this is the trigger input. These two can be controlled together to control the S and R. So basically it is nothing but a flip-flop itself. 
the entire unit the triple five the triple five is also working as flip flop nothing but working as a flip flop here this is it because ultimately we are applying the out inputs to the flip flop itself and it is going to switch between two possible outputs it will produce the output produced will be in terms of zero and one itself right and how the output is produced will be controlled with the input the trigger at the threshold because the two inputs are applied at pin number two and pin number um, six that is going to change the um, voltage okay and also the reset reset is going to completely restart otherwise reset the timer itself then so this is about the trigger next uh, is output output terminal here all the outputs are observed nothing more okay whatever output is produced by the timer that can be observed at the pin number 3 moving to the next pin that is reset reset um a negative signal applied at the reset is going to completely reset the unit okay whatever operation is being performed it is going to just reset the entire voltage right it has to be applied with a negative pulse It has to be applied with a negative pulse. Okay, the reset will be applied with a negative pulse, and the negative pulse is going to make the SR flip flop reset. It will be reset. Okay, and whenever not in use, it has to be connected to plus resistors. Whenever it is not in use, it has to be connected to a plus resistors. Right. Next, moving to the control voltage. The control voltage is going to modify the the uh, vcc along with the threshold the threshold voltage to um two third of vcc it is just going to do that here this is the threshold will be modified by the control voltage moving to the threshold any signal threshold voltage applied to is going to modify the output of the comparator okay any value greater than two third of the vcc threshold is applied to the positive from the path as you can observe here Any value greater than the two third of the VCC is going to take out as out of the upper comparator as high. As a result, what happens? The uh, switch off will be set and the output will be minus. Uh, sorry, uh, output will be low. Okay, because we are taking the complement of the output. We are taking the output as Q bar, not the Q. Yes, that is about the threshold discharge. Discharge is the collector terminal of the discharge. The discharge output is the other uh, discharge pin of the triple five is the collector of the discharge transistor. Where the transistor switches between the saturation and cutoff depending on the output of the flip flop. Okay, if the output is set, the input taking the base as uh, high, it will move to the saturation and cutoff region respectively depending on the output of the flip. So that's okay. So this is about the internal and the pin diagram and explanation for the each uh, pins of the IC triple five dual inline package A pins, right? Now we will do the operation that by explaining. The pin diagram itself, I have almost covered it. Okay, I have almost covered the operation. It is a eight pin dual inline package ground with respect to this pin. All the uh, voltages will be measured. Trigger, trigger input, trigger input is here. That is the uh, input to the lower comparator. Okay, any value uh, greater than To one third of the VCC of this trigger input is going to modify the output. Okay, so this is positive uh, value. The comparator output, the comparator output will be zero. The comparator can uh, only take the values of zero and one. Okay, positive output if the trigger is less than one third of the VCC. If it exceeds the one third of the VCC, the output goes low. Otherwise, the output remains high. Okay, it is the same with the threshold and the control voltage also. So, in the same manner, the apparent comparator are going to 
The output of the apparent load of parameter is applied to the input of the flip-flop S and R. Where we are observing the output Q and Q bar, where output is connected to Q bar, whereas uh, output Q of the flip-flop is further connected to a discharge transistor. Where the operation of the discharge transistor is to switch between the saturation and the cutoff region depending on the output of the, um, what we can say, flip-flop Q. So it is just acting as a um, output for the to switch. It is just acting as a switch, okay? And its operation depends on the Q output of the test, right? Now, so this is about the pin diagram A pin and internally how it is connected, how the voltage is dividing here, two third, one third VCC, okay? Uh, ground is connected here, trigger here, everything. Detail and its explanation is over. Now moving to the one of the application of the IC triple five that is bistable multivibrator. Bistable multivibrator. This name itself is saying that it is having two stable states. It is having two stable states. What does this mean? It is having two stable states. It is simply switching between two. States and two states here will be 0 and 1. So, bistable multivibrator operates as a simple square wave generator, otherwise, a rectangular wave generator. We can see why because it is switching between continuously 0 and 1, and the operation of the switching depends on the input supply to the pin number 2 and 4. What are the pin number 2 and 4? The pin number 2 and 4 are. Trigger and reset. Right? Bistable multi bivibrator. Bistable multi vibrator using triple five. Thank you. Bistable multivibrator using triple five times. So, what is a bistable multivibrator? Multivibrator means it is going to switch the uh, output. Okay, it is bistable means it is going to switch the output between two stable states. That is a simple definition for the bistable multivibrator. Here, this is pin number six that is connected to ground. 6, this is 1, it's connected here, and this is 5, through a capacitor, it is connected to pin number 1, so this is 5, so 5 is the control voltage, right, and uh, pin number 1 is the ground, right, so pin number 1 is connected to ground, and now, the two inputs trigger and reset. Two and four trigger and reset. Right? Trigger and reset. This is ground. From here, it will switch between two possibilities. Here we are connecting a switch. Okay. From here it is taking the trigger and here it is taking the reset. Okay, so the Two inputs are connected here. And trigger is connected to ground to a switch. Okay. When this is connected, it is connected to trigger. When the switch is thrown to this position, okay, to the trigger position, the switch is connected to trigger. When it is uh, connected here, the reason will be connected to. Ground, okay. 
when the switch is connected to trigger ground is connected to trigger and when switch is connected to reset ground will be connected to reset okay. so when ground is connected to reset means what it will reset the output okay it is going to reset the output here now these are called as pull up resistors the two pull up resistors are connected here that is further connected to the plus bcc that is pin number a and of course pin number 3 will be the output here so this is the circuit of the bistable multivibrator of course these are termed as r1 and r2 here this is reset this is trigger so this circuit switches between the two inputs once ground okay the two inputs are applied to zero when zero is applied to reset what happens and when a zero is applied to trigger what happens that is what the uh, output is okay so this is about the trigger signal and this is the reset signal okay and this is the output when trigger and when reset it goes low right so this is the value in trigger input reset input and output okay trigger input reset input and the output here so when the trigger input is made zero when the trigger input is made zero the output is going to be high okay so it is completely depending on the input applied to the trigger and reset when trigger is applied to zero okay when trigger is applied to zero and when reset is applied to zero when reset is applied to zero it is going to entire operation right what we have studied about the reset a negative going signal has to be negative pulse has to be applied to reset right so when trigger is applied a low to the trigger zero to the trigger is going to make the output as high okay and a uh, low to the reset is going to bring it to the other state okay so the input switching between reset trigger and reset is going to continuously change the signal from low to high low to high and low to high so this is the operation of the by stable Multi-vibrate, okay. Bistable, multi-vibrate. Right. So what are we have studied in the triple phi diagram? That the field diagram we have studied and we have studied the internal structure that is comprising of the two comparators internally, internally after the comparator and lower comparator whose output is further connected to the flip flop and uh, uh, output of the flip flop is taken as q bar as the output and one of the output is connected to the discharge transistor okay by stable multivibrators which is between the two outputs trigger output is low for low trigger output output is output means the pin number three is high for reset as low a low subsequent Makes the output of the uh, bicycle multivibrator at pin number three as low. Again, if the trigger is made again low, it will become high. Again, if the reset is made zero, it is going to become low. So it is going to switch between two states. Okay, bicycle multivibrator that switches between two stable states is about the bicycle multivibrator. Right. 
So this is all we have about the non-sinusoidal oscillators. So this is the end of the chapter, oscillators. Just from the paper, we can understand the entire working of the bystable multimeter. Okay. The input, the switch is the main operation here. Yes. That is connecting the trigger and reset to the ground. Okay. When the switch is connecting the reset to the ground, and the switch is connecting the trigger to the ground, the output is going to be oh, sorry, high. And for the reset, as low the output is going to be low, right? So totally it is about how the trigger and the reset is connected to the ground. Okay, trigger connected to ground output is high. Reset connected to ground output will go low. Okay, so it is going to switch between two possible uh, states. Right, so uh, we have discussed all this in the oscillators. Right from the uh, definition, there are uh, different types that are RC and LC oscillators. Then we have studied about the hartley Colbert's oscillator, the RC phase shift and the Winbridge oscillator, and also the crystal oscillator. Later we move to the non sinusoidal oscillator, where in the non sinusoidal oscillator we studied about the IC triple five. Its spin diagram, its internal connection as a comparator and the uh, shift uh, flip flop, and also a transistor is connected internally. All that in detail we have studied. It's each pin operation, pin operation of the each uh, pins of the triple five we have studied, and also we have studied the bistable multivariate. Right <clears throat> now, as the numerals are very important. I will just revise the expressions, okay? Expressions of frequencies of oscillators. And this is very important. Starting with Hartley, we started the first oscillator as Hartley oscillator. Okay. And the Hartley oscillator, the frequency expression is given by 1 divided by 2 by under root L equivalent C. Where L equivalent is L1 plus L2. Right? Next, we study colloids. Next, we study colloids oscillator. Where the frequency is given by F is equal to 1 divided by 2 by under root L C equivalent. Because Hartley uses two inductors, one capacitor, all it uses two capacitors and one inductor. That's why right. we can find L equivalent here and here C equivalent. Because two capacitors will be connected in series, we are going to use that expression of C equivalent as C1 into C2 divided by C1 plus C2. Right? So these are the two important expressions. Next, RC phase shift oscillator. RC phase shift oscillator, the frequency is given by F is equal to 1 divided by 2 by R into C into root. Six. So we find root six constant in the numerator of RC patient oscillator. Moving to the next one, main bridge oscillator. Okay. 
brain bridge oscillator having a frequency <coughs> n is equal to 1 divided by 2 by r here so all these expressions are very important because these are very frequently asked in high marks here frequency is equal to 2 pi under root l equivalent c where l value and l2 are added where l value and l2 are the values of inductance connector available in the circuit of hardly oscillator the two um, inductors l1 and l2 will be connected there the equivalent of them will be l1 plus l2 because they are connected in series so that equivalent into the value of capacitance so c means the value of capacitance that is connected in the frequency determining circuit of the hardly oscillator and frequency is the uh, f is the frequency of oscillation of the hardly oscillator that means uh, the oscillator that generates the oscillation otherwise the voltage the frequency of that voltage is f and it is determined by uh, otherwise it is dependent on the values of inductor and capacitor connected in the so, right. <clears throat> in the corporate oscillator, again the frequency is frequency of oscillation of the wave generated at the velocity voltage generated by the corporate oscillator. Where it is going to depend on the value of inductor and the value of equivalent capacitance. Value of inductor and value of equivalent capacitance is C equivalent. Where C equivalent is given by C1, C2 divided by C1 plus C2. Right. Patient oscillator here, the circuit is comprising of R and C. It is basically comprising of a set of RC that are uh, going to produce a 60 degree each phase difference. So, such three sets of R, C, R, C, and R, C are available in the circuit. We maintain the value of R1, R2, R3 is equal to same, that is R. That's why the expression is comprising of only R here. Okay? In the same way, C is also the 3 C will be used as C1, C2, C3 is equal to same values. That's why we can observe C in the expression. Right? So, here R is the value of resistance, C is the value of capacitance and frequency, so F is the frequency of oscillation. Moving to the main bridge oscillator, main bridge oscillator is also having a set of R1, R2 and C1, C2 here. We maintain that the values are equal, that's why we can see only R and C in the expression. Where R is the value of resistance, C is the value of capacitance, and F is the frequency of oscillations. Here, so what type of questions can be asked based on this? Directly giving the L1 and L2 value and C value, they will ask you the frequency. <coughs> By giving the value of inductors, L1, L2, and C, they will ask you the value of frequency. In this case, it becomes very easy to calculate. We will take the total of the N equivalent. We substitute here. We substitute the value of capacitance. We uh, do the required uh, calculations here to find the value of frequency. In the calculation of this, I have told you one important thing that is the powers. Important powers of 10. Under the rule, I have told you always maintain the powers of 10 as even so that you can easily take them outside the root that is directly divided by 2. If you take a odd number, you cannot perfectly divide it by 2 and you cannot bring it outside the root. So always remember during the calculations of the frequency. What you have to remember here? Remember to maintain the powers of 10 as a even number. You have to remember to maintain the powers of 10 as a even number. So by taking it outside the root, you can easily divide it just by 2 to bring it outside the root and then once you bring it outside the root, you have to simply shift it to the numerator. Okay. The minus um, powers simply becomes plus powers on the uh, moving to the numerator. Okay. So taking outside the roots, the powers of 10, maintain them as even. Got it? The same rule we have to follow for the Colbert's oscillator also. Where uh, here also we have to maintain the power of 10 as even number so that it can be easily bring or brought out from the root by simply divided by 2. <coughs> this is the one way of asking the question that is frequency is asked by giving the values of inductor and capacitor. Okay. They can also the value of capacitance. Okay. They will ask me the value of capacitance, they will specify the value of 
frequency and the value of two intervals. So in the same way here also we will calculate the equivalent uh, interval that is zero plus zero. We will place it here. We will place the frequency here. We will have to calculate the same. Here what method I have used? I have used the method of squaring the both sides. What you have to follow here? Squaring the both sides. When you square the both sides, what happens? The term of frequency simply squares up and the root is going to be simply removed because the root when squared is going to cancel. The root and square cancel out each other. So you will have uh, f square, 2 square, pi square. But the L will come outside the root and C will also come outside the root without any square terms. The uh, remaining job is just to rearrange, bring the C here, move the uh, F here, do the required computation to get the value of capacitance. Right. So this method can be followed. When C is asked, just to square both the sides. <coughs> Similarly, L can also be asked. But when L is asked, they have to specify one of the value of inductor that is here. Okay. One of the value will be given, C will be given, and F will be given. The same way, I will substitute the value of C, I will substitute the value of F, I will square both sides. L equivalent will come outside. I will first calculate L equivalent. Once I will get the value of L equivalent, I will create L equivalent minus L1 or L, whichever is given, is going to give me the other inductor value. Okay. So, what is the procedure? Substitute the value of C, substitute the value of F, square the both sides, bring the equivalent outside, place it here, bring the frequency square this side, do the uh, required computation, and here you are going to get the L equivalent value. Once you have the L equivalent value, simply minus L equivalent minus one of the inductor is going to give you the value of the right number. Here. So this is <coughs> when L is asked. Right? So here also the value of L is given, C is given, C1 and C2 is given, then you have to follow this expression. You have to do the product of C1 and C2 divided by the sum of C1 and C2, that is going to give you the C value. Substitute the value of D1 inductor, substitute the value of the C equivalent we have calculated, find the value of the frequency. Okay. Here also we have to take care of this powers of L. Always maintain them as even number. The other way it can be asked is they will give you uh, the frequency value, they will give you the C equivalent value, they will ask you the L. So I have told you the same method has to be followed. The, uh, squaring both the sides, by squaring both the sides, we can find the value of this L. Right? L can be given, L can be given, uh, you have to calculate C equivalent, one of the C will be given by using this expression. Again, we have to calculate the value of other capacitance. Like in the other form of question that can be asked. Next, as a question oscillator, frequency is supposed to be calculated by frequency is calculated, value of R is given, C is given. Value of R and C will be given and we will calculate the value of frequency by simply substituting value of R here, C here and finding the value of F is equal. Whichever other value will be as a simply real C, I can simply write the expression, all the expression, R is equal to 1 by 2 by FC plus just we bring R here and F here, replace the values. Next, if C is R, 2 by Rn root 6. Okay? So, all possible expressions are there and for the answer phase the shift oscillator. All possible expressions for answer phase the shift oscillator. If frequency is asked, this expression. Resistance is asked, this expression. Capacitance is asked to follow this expression. Okay. If you just remember this one, you can form the other two expressions. Frequency can be asked by giving the value of R and C. Resistance can be asked by giving the value of F and C. Capacitance can be asked by giving the value of R and F. Got it? Each term is having a constant root 6 for R situation oscillator. Coming to the main bridge oscillator, even the headache of Root 6 is gone. Okay. Even that is not here. Very simple. R is equal to 1 by 2 by F. Okay. C is equal to 1 by 2 by F. R. Right. Three simple expressions formed from the basic expression F is equal to 1 by 2 by RC. R is equal to 1 by 2 by FC. C is equal to 1 by 2 by FR. 
right? So these are all the questions that can be asked uh, for five marks as numericals based on a Hartley oscillator, based on a Perfect oscillator, based on a phase shift oscillator, and based on Greenwich oscillator. Right? Various parameters can be asked. Frequency can be asked by giving L and C. L can be asked by giving L and C. C can be asked by giving L and L. The parameters here F, inductance value, and capacitance. Frequency, inductance value, capacitance. Here also frequency, inductance value, capacitance. But here frequency, resistance value, capacitance. Here also frequency, resistance value, capacitance. So totally three parameters are there. Right? So this is how the numericals, various numericals can be asked. And these formulas formula will be used and also written the required methods to be followed. Right? And just revise the basics that are important for oscillators, right? The starting of oscillations. The bar Poisson's criterion. What is the bar Poisson's criterion? Say A beta loop gain is equal to 1 has to be maintained. Second thing, positive feedback must be maintained for sustained, otherwise the undamped oscillations. How the oscillation start? Basically, noise signal will be picked up, and this noise signal will be having all possible, otherwise the all frequencies of the sinusoidal waves. Okay, all the possible frequencies of the sinusoidal wave will be available in the noise signal. So this noise signal will be picked up, and it will be amplified, given as the feedback. It starts the oscillation. Okay, initially, what we maintain a beta slightly greater than one, so that the noise can be easily amplified and given as the input to the oscillator. Once the oscillations start, we have to bring down the value of A beta to 1 and maintain it as 1 for the undamped, otherwise the, the sustained oscillations. Clear? So this is about the uh, starting of the oscillations, otherwise the Barclays criteria. Right? Now the tune the circuit that is comprising of A circuit when here a capacitor is connected. This is the voltage V. Here one inductor is connected. Yeah. Okay. So initially we have two positions A and B. When the, the switch is thrown like position one, the capacitor starts charging. And the capacitor starts charging, it charges completely. When it is completely charged, what we do? We change the position of the switch. Capacitor is charged. Okay, this is a one time uh, step to be followed. Okay, once it is completely charged, we will uh, not connect it to the battery again, otherwise, the voltage. Capacitor is completely charged. When the capacitor is completely charged, the switch is thrown to the position B. Capacitor slowly discharges through the inductor. Now, as the capacitor is discharging through the inductor, the inductor develops a magnetic field. Okay. The magnetic field is developed when the capacitor is completely discharged. Once the capacitor is completely discharged, what happens? The inductor uh, starts dropping. Okay. The inductor uh, field starts dropping and it results into a vacuum. Back uh, EMF starts flowing through the capacitor, and the uh, back EMF applied to the capacitor is going to charge the capacitor with opposite polarity. Okay, if initially it is charged like this with back EMF, it will charge like this. Okay, opposite polarity the capacitor starts charging. Again, the capacitor is completely charged, it starts discharging through the inductor. The process keeps on continuing the charging and Discharging of the capacitor. Capacitor charges again, discharges, charges again, discharges from the back element of the inductor. Right? So that is going to produce the oscillations. Okay? 
this is going to produce the oscillation. But there is a issue with this type of circuit. What is that issue? It is going to continue to be damped signals. Okay, damped oscillations will be produced by this type of circuit. Why? Why? Because it is having internal resistance. This is having resistance. This is having resistance. The inductor will be sorry. Here there will be connected the inductor. Okay, inductor not the resistor. Right. Uh, it is having its uh, uh, resistance the wires, the connecting wires are also having their inductors. Uh, sorry, uh, resistances. Okay. Because of that, losses will occur. And due to that losses, what happens? The signal is going to slowly degrade. Degrading signals will be an effect of such circuit. That's why a tuned oscillator along with the amplifier will be used. That is the example for hard plane and polymer oscillator we have seen. So how the heart line uh, pulpit oscillator appear, or the heart line pulpit oscillator appear along with the CE amplifier. The CE amplifier will be output will be collector output will be given to the uh, tuned circuit, otherwise the frequency determining circuit like this, where two inductors and one capacitor are connected in heart line, and uh, two capacitors and one inductor will be connected in pulpit. <coughs> so what basically happens here is. The collector current of this E amplifier is going to charge the capacitors C1 and C2. Once the capacitors C1 and C2 are completely charged, it starts charging to the inductor. Okay, and the same process starts back here and is going to charge them again with the process polarity. The uh, two inductors L1 and L2 are having um, the voltages across them as 180 degree phase difference. Okay, so that Output of the L2 is given as the input to the amplifier. The amplifier C amplifier already producing 180 degree phase difference. The feedback uh, network, otherwise the frequency determining circuit is going to produce another 180 degree phase difference. A total of 360 degree phase difference is observed in Hartley oscillator. And the designing of the A beta is equal to 1, A is given by L1 by L2, and beta is given by L2 by L1. Okay, and maintaining the value of A beta is equal to 1, we have to design the values of L1 and L2 such that they are going to become the product of A beta is going to become 1. So these two conditions satisfy the Barcrossus criteria and oscillations are produced. Okay. And what about the uh, Palmer's oscillator? Two capacitors are connected, so the two capacitors are out of phase by 180 degree. The voltage across the capacitor C2 is the feedback circuit. So the feedback uh, signal applied to the C amplifier, C amplifier gives 180 degree. Capacitor C2 uh, voltage gives another 180 degree phase difference. Total phase is maintained. Right? Where A is C2 by C1, beta is C1 by C2. The product of A beta has to be maintained as 1 to satisfy the Barthesian's criterion for sustained oscillations. Right? So this is about the uh, basic operation, otherwise the working on the tuned oscillator, right? So we have studied how the oscillations start, what is the operation of the tuned circuit. We have studied two types of tuned oscillators, hard line polypers oscillator, we have studied RC oscillator, uh, we have studied Bainbridge oscillator, where uh, RC oscillators are used to generate low frequencies. Tuned oscillators are uh, suitable for producing High frequencies, right? Uh, I would like to add something about the RC oscillator that is depending on the lead lag concept, the Wainbridge oscillator, and the phase shift concept, the RC oscillator, right? Lead lag network uh, depends on the resonant frequency for which the gain is maximum. That particular signal will be picked up by the lead lag network and applied to the comparator positive terminal. Okay, that's why it is maintaining a uh, positive feedback. About the RC phase shift oscillator, the RC phase shift oscillator will be having a set of uh, RC networks, three RC networks, each giving 60 degree phase difference, 60 plus 60 plus 60, 180 degree phase difference is given. This feedback signal is applied to the negative terminal, 180 phase difference by the RC network and another 180 by the in uh, inverting amplifier used in the OPAM gives a total of 180. Uh, sorry, 360 phase difference that is uh, required for the criterion for Barthesians. Right? 
So these are the concepts of Hartley, Colpitt, the uh, acid patient time, weight weight oscillator. So this is all we have studied in the oscillators. The next chapter we will move to is the wireless communication, which is a very um, interesting and a short chapter we can say. Two marks and three marks, hardly five marks questions, total five marks questions will be asked from the wireless communication. Okay, so the seventh chapter wireless communication I'll be starting in the next class students. So this is all about today's class. Thank you.